I am Professor Vijay Prakash Anand. In this video, I am going to discuss demographic segmentation. Earlier, I have talked about segmentation, targeting and positioning. Out of segmentation, there are five ways to segment the market. And the first way is the demographic segmentation. Now, demographic segmentation is most commonly used base for segmentation. The basis of the segmentation is age, sex, education, income, occupation, marital status, family size, family life cycle, religion, nationality and social class. All these variables are either used as a single factor or in combination to segment the market. Now let us talk about the first element that is age. Age is the most commonly used basis as the same age group people behave in the identical manner and will have identical needs. So youth will be having the identical needs among different people. So that's why we say marketers design, produce, package and promote products to different kind of age groups. Now, for example, Colgate has different products for different age groups like Colgate Dental Cream and Colgate Kids Toothpaste. Now, on the basis of age only, the leading toy manufacturer Fisher Price has seven categories of toys. Now, come to the second element. The second element is income. Income has been a key driver in segmenting the market. It is based on the belief that the behavior of the consumer changes with the changes in income. Now many auto and two wheeler companies, consumer durable companies, financial services companies, hospitality, apparels, cosmetics and travel companies segment their market on the basis of income. Now broadly on the basis of income, market can be segmented as low income, low middle income, middle income, upper middle income and high income. It has also been found that with the increase in income, the percentage expenditure on food and other basic necessities go down. That's why you need to take care of that. And CK Prahlad in his book, The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid has talked about the marketing opportunities lying at the bottom of the pyramid, that is lower income segment. And in India, the success on Nirma Ghadi and 555 are examples of successful marketing at the bottom of the pyramid. Now let us come to the third concept that is called gender. Now gender differentiation forms a fundamental segment in marketing. Now as the needs of male and female are very very different. You talk about clothing, you talk about apparels, you talk about cosmetics, magazines and all. Gender makes all the difference to create its own market. You talk about X, you talk about Raymond, Pulsar, these are the brand targeted towards male. While Femina, Revlon, Titan Raga are the brands targeted towards female. Few brands target both the genders like Nike and Garnier through their different products or through sub-branding. Now come to the fourth element, occupation. Occupation is an important variable in segmenting the market. The consumption behavior of a working executive differs from a self-employed person or a blue collar worker or a businessman. Now in the same way there are professionals like doctors, lawyers, teachers, professors, chartered accountants or traders or students or shopkeepers or housewives whose consumption habits are similar in their segment. Now financial companies and banks like ICICI Bank, State Bank of India, Central Bank of India etc. regularly target these on the basis of their occupation with their different schemes. Now come to the fifth element that is education. Now education also plays an important role in segmenting the market. Indian market can be classified as illiterates, literates, high school pass outs, university graduates and professionally qualified people. Now the business of information like newspaper, magazines, books get seriously affected by the education variable. So if people are literate, there will be more demand for newspaper, magazines and books. Now with increasing literacy rate, the demand for these products are going up in the market. Now come to the marital status. 
now being single or being married influences the behavior pattern of the customers and thus it paves the way for market segmentation now unmarried people generally use more of fast food and packaged food than their married counterparts that's why the requirements are very very different that's why the segmentation has to be done very very carefully similarly married people tend to spend a lot on consumer durables cars travel plans and financial products now few businesses like matrimonial websites wedding management companies wedding video and photographers are directly dependent on the status of marriage and that's why marriage is an important variable let us come to the family size family size and structure is also an important variable in segmenting the market with the passage of time and effective implementation of family planning measures the average indian family size is declining earlier there used to be at least 3 to 4 children in the family now which has largely gone down to two or even one in many families now the social fabric of life is also changing with more and more nuclear families than the joint families it means now there is a difference in the demand pattern and it has led to the changes in the purchasing behavior earlier if you are spending too much then there was a guilt feeling of spending money but now you feel better off after splurging now with easy credit availability and younger earning population with more nuclear families and singles living in metros and cities a new segment has been created and the companies are cashing on it with their different products and service offering and that's why you find most of the malls in india are doing brisk business thanks to the large consumer base among the single males and females working in corporates right from the apparels to watches to multiplex all have benefited largely in the post liberalization era with the changing family size and structure now let us come to the socio economic classification you would have heard about acc acc is a very very important parameter acc is an important classification to classify households in india and acc is based upon two variables the first one is education of chief wage earner and the second one is the number of consumer durables owned by the family and the list has got 11 items now which are the items the items are electricity connection ceiling fan lpg stove two wheeler color tv refrigerator washing machine personal computer or laptop you should be having car jeep or van or and air conditioner besides that we also take into consideration agricultural land now based on these two parameters each household is classified in one of the 12 acc groups that is a1 a2 a3 then b1 b2 c1 c2 d1 d2 and then e1 e2 and e3 now these 12 groups are applicable to both urban and rural area the top most new acc class a1 comprises of only half percent of all indian households nearly 2% of indian households and less than 0.1% of rural households belong to the new acc a1 that's why we say more than half of all acc a1 that is the sec a1 households reside in the top 6 indian cities right from delhi to mumbai to kolkata chennai bangalore and hyderabad now at the other end of the spectrum the bottom most new acc class e3 comprises of 10% of all indian households and that's what ck prahlad has talked about bottom of the pyramid now only 2% of the urban households and 13% of the rural households belong to the new acc e3 now nearly 93% of all acc e3 households are in rural india so that's what is demographic segmentation all about thanks for watching the video